Orion is different from what we had back in the Apollo days. As you would think, over the last 50 years, we've had a tremendous amount of technology developments. So I would say that Orion is smarter in some ways, um, thankfully, because we've had so much development in computing technologies and efficiencies of life support systems. Uh, the actual volume, while it may seem small to you, it's much bigger than what we had back in the Apollo days. So we wanted to give the crew members a little bit more space so that they could do their work and their operations with a bit more room. Artemis 2 will send up to four crew members, kind of similar to Artemis 1, just around the moon and then come back to Earth. So really that's a test flight to evaluate all of our systems with humans on board. In the capsule, we still have to exercise we don't have a lot of space, so we're looking at new exercise technologies that'll do things like rowing and allow us to just switch up a few of the modalities on the device, and then you can do squats and deadlifts and the kinds of exercises that you want. The human body doesn't like microgravity. We're not designed to be in a microgravity environment, and over time, if you don't do things like eat properly, drink enough water, and exercise, your body is going to start to get lazy. You're going to lose muscle, lose bone, lose cardiovascular endurance. And while that may have some impacts to while you're in space, even more so is when you come home, we want you to be able to walk and interact with your family and get back on the treadmill and start running again. And so we think about the human risks not only during your mission in the hostile environment that is space, the vehicle has to protect you from all of that. We still have our sights set on humans going to Mars. Going back to the moon is a smart way of doing it. We are really learning so much even today with the space station. Now, going back to the moon seems like a smart idea because it's just a little bit further away. It's, you know, rather than a couple of hours to get to the space station, it's going to be two to three days to get to the moon. Whereas Mars is much, much further away. So the complexity of your systems grows the further away you get from home. And the goal is not only to go to the South Pole in 2024, plant the flag and be like, woohoo, we're done. It's to then learn and evolve those missions so that by around 2028, we'll be able to actually live on the moon for longer and longer durations and do it in a sustainable way. From what we learn from the moon missions, we will then be able to, in parallel, continue to develop our plans and our technologies to send humans to Mars. Mm -hmm.